Have you changed your fantasy football name to Connor Stallions yet? This I, guy has. <laughs> Welcome back to the podcast daily. It is a hump day version. And yes, we're going to get into the madness with the Michigan Mafia. Berm absolutely cannot wait. That was Bill Landis. I'm Austin Ward. He is Berm. You all wanted us to get into it. We've kind of waited. We wanted a little bit more information to come out. And I bet there's going to be even more. But this has got to be one of the most insane college football stories that I can remember. How deep did it go, Bill? That's a great question. That should be a <laughs> headline on the front of a magazine, maybe. I think. And this time, it wouldn't, this time maybe it wouldn't be overreacting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy. Um, Doug and I talked about it on Kings of the North on Monday. And I was like, I, th- I think it's weird. I think it's worth looking into, at least at the time. And then like more information came out about how this information was ascertained. And I was like, okay, this is a little different. So um, I don't necessarily have, I don't, I don't have any problem whatsoever with it football teams stealing each other's signs. I think it's gamesmanship that is built into the fabric of trying to win football games. And I'm sure there are times any Ohio, State, Ohio State has had the opponent's signs too. It's how you got them. That's the issue. And uh, Mr. Stallions was uh, rather elaborate, I guess, in the way he was doing it. And also too, like the BS with Michigan and Jim, Har- Jim Harbaugh specifically, they're like, oh, I don't know what, I don't know what you're talking about while well, the guy's hanging out in his back pocket whispering plays into his ear. Like, sweet, sweet nothing. It's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah. I look at it like I, I really am trying to not react to this until all of the evidence is out, until there has been actual like legal discussions from Michigan and whatever. The bottom line is the NCAA sucks. Okay. And so the odds are that they will find a way to mess this up no matter what. Happens. I don't think this is an NCA matter. That's the difference I mean, it, between this and others. But this is not about recruiting. This is not about getting a, a player to play because he's academically ineligible or, you know, having a seventh year quarterback who hasn't been going to class for three months play in the national championship game or whatever. Okay. Like this is about hypothetically just for whatever, <laughs> just saying this, wherever that might've happened. This is about a team that was broken for two decades deciding and maybe I'm, I'm going to even go ahead and say this. I don't think that at the beginning this was, I don't think this was a Jim Harbaugh's idea. I don't think this was something that he was like, you know what I think we should do. I think this was a young person who walked into the football program, who had been around the program and said, I have a way I can help. And the other coaches said, hey, we need all the help we can get. Don't tell us how you do it. Mm-hmm. And then at some point, don't tell us how you do it becomes, well, there's only one way you could possibly do this. <laughs> and then it becomes beyond the pale of plausible deniability that everyone didn't know. And then you see the videos on the sidelines. You see, I'm telling you what, folks, I beg you to listen. I spend every single Ohio State football game on the sideline. I spend a lot of the time during those games talking to recruiting staffers because you know what? They're down in the end zone. They're not football coaches. They're, they're not They're not standing next to the head coach. They're not in the ear of the offensive coordinator and defense coordinator alternatively, which is weird. I mean, it's like, wow, this guy knows offense and defense. Wow, this guy should be the highest paid coach on Michigan staff, yet he's making $55,000 a year to be a recruiting staffer, which is actually a fair amount of money for a low-level recruiting staffer to make in the Big Ten. So you wonder why maybe he's getting paid that amount because he's are expensive. Uh, <laughs> it's... It's so egregious and it's so obvious that why this was being done. And again, I don't think at the start it was a Harbaugh like directive, but there's no way they didn't know. You don't go from being one of the worst teams in Michigan football history in 2020 to being the most dominant team in the country over the next 30 games without something else happening. Well, well, Pythagorean were like recruiting rankings. Recruiting didn't change. change. (laughs) Roster didn't like get markedly better. Yeah, they they had good players in the class of 2021, the JJ McCarthy's, the the the, um, Donovan Edwards's, et cetera. But like, it didn't go from wow, all of a sudden we're Ole Miss. We're recruiting like it wasn't that sort of thing. Like something else. Interesting choice of school to compare them to. (laughs) Well, Ole Miss cheated like hell. To go from nothing in 2012 to having the best class in the country in 2013. Michigan still has been a fairly average recruiting program despite their success. I'm particularly amused, I guess, by a lot of the mental gymnastics that are required to not think that this is a serious issue or that it was just taking advantage of a, a gray area in the rules, which is most amusing because of the program that we're talking about where the mythical Michigan man would never operate anywhere other than black and white and yes or no. Like they don't step into the gray. I think that part, especially with Jim Harbaugh being at the top of the pyramid, like 
I don't didn't know that cheeseburgers were outlawed during COVID. I I I didn't know. That I never got that memo either. I, had plenty of I didn't read the rule book and the change in 1994. I was in the NFL then. I didn't know that you couldn't send people to go scout or videotape games where you're you're actually not playing the opponent or you're buying tickets to on both sides of the horseshoe to go for Ohio State and Penn State. Like you can't. The amount of evidence that is already out is as damning as it gets. And then you say, well, how can you prove that it impacted the game? Well, I don't know. Watch them. Did TCU play in a Big Ten stadium last year? Nope. No, they didn't? Okay. Then they beat the pants off Michigan? They sure did. Huh. Well, they, that's odd. They they scored 58 points against Michigan, against a defense that had given up like 20, 17 a game all year. That does feel a little bit weird. What a coincidence. And I guess that's one of many coincidences if you want to excuse Jim Harbaugh for this. But given the people that are potentially involved here, which again is – this is an NCA rule, but I do not think that it is going to just come down to an NCA decision here because broadcast partners are not going to enjoy people questioning the validity of the game. You look at the number of states in that have Big Ten schools that have legalized gambling, they're not going to enjoy the fact that the game may have been compromised. The integrity of the game and the Big Ten itself for its championship, if all of these game outcomes are in question, not even a, in terms of sports point spreads win or loss that is a massive deal like the big 10 holds itself up to that same sort of standard that like you don't tolerate any any rule breaking and you want to make sure that you have a a valid champion that can they don't ever have to take a banner down it's all of these other partners not just the ncaa that is pushing against this and i i find it hard to believe that anyone would that they would take the steps that i think many people around the league whether that's coaches whether that's fans, whether that's other players, whoever, they would like to see Michigan at a minimum banned from, ban from the Big Ten Championship game, and some would say not able to play again for the rest of the year. I find it difficult to believe that anybody would take that step. And the counter argument is that of that is, hey, you know, these current players don't deserve to be punished. Watch some of the Adam King posted a video of these people on the sideline. The current players are also involved. They've got the signals, and they're all. Pointing to the sky. Hey, here comes the pass. Like they're they're all everybody's involved. And for Jim Harbaugh to pretend like he's not is absolutely no. insane. It's been Jim Harbaugh's MO his entire career to operate in the gray area. And that's what I that's where I get a little bit frustrated with people who ex- expect or say, like, oh, it's a Michigan man. Like this is the guy who found the gray the loopholes in the um, recruiting satellite camps. This is the guy who found the looking for the loopholes in the, the burgers. Like this is what he does. This is a guy who is entire. You time, don't want a burger with a loophole. His, in his it. entire time. This is a guy mm, that's who, gross. who met with an Ohio State recruit two and a half hours away from campus before he even started as a Michigan head coach, or right when he got started at the behest or direction of a Michigan media member. Like this is it's a weird mm. dynamic. This is a guy who, when he was recruiting at Stanford, would re- take commitments from 30 kids in, in July and then dump them all in November when he had better players. Like, he's not this moral, morally fine, upstanding guy. He's a football coach. They all want to win at any cost. And it's puzzling to me why people just don't. I mean, I, I get it. I know fanaticism is what it is, but like, there's no way you can look at this with objectivity and say, oh, that's, that seems fine. It seems fine. It seems fair. It seems like a good idea. I mean, it's just stupid. I think you made a really good point, Austin, um, about like the motivation behind this because like Big Ten coaches are rightfully pissed off. I don't know if that alone would be enough to get the ball rolling on on this. Yeah, because that just looks like sour grips. Well, coaches, coaches are pissed off at everything. Yeah. Like <laughs> if, they, if 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 action happened every time they got angry, like. I don't know. We'd never They'd be able, never, we'd never be able never to play games. the games. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think there's a greater power here at like, like pu- pushing down, right? You mentioned the TV partners and the game. Like that's just not been talked about. I think a lot of the, the discussion around this has been like sour grapes, like Berm said, and, you know, Michigan media pointing the finger at Ohio State and, and national writers, I think, talking more about the, the coaching impact of this. And I, I really don't believe that's where this is coming from because. If it were, I I think it's a topic that maybe would have been shelved until after the year. Like there are, I think there's like big money impacted. Yeah, <laughs> impacted you can't, by you, uh, yeah, you can't push this off. Yeah. To the end Billions of dollars. Yeah. You can't state. push this off to the end of the year. Yeah. And and look, here's what I know for sure. On this side, in this building, in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center, Ryan Day 
desperately wants to beat Michigan next month. He does not want their program shut down. And for someone to say, well, you lost those last two against Jim Harbaugh, then you didn't get your shot. And like, there's a big old asterisk on your Big Ten championship on the comeback. You didn't get to claim some gold pants for him. He does not want that. I'm telling you that with 100% certainty. I don't know the level of which Ohio State has had to participate in sharing evidence or information, but I know, and I assume that the athletic department has based on the uh, ticket tracking, uh, some of the photos photos and surveillance, like, but from the coaching staff perspective, my understanding is that there have been uh, zero phone calls, situations with lawyers, anybody trying to offer on the record testimony against Michigan. Ryan Day does not have time for that right now. He is still trying to beat Wisconsin, and then he's going to get ready for Rutgers. Now, the rivalry is always in the back of his mind, and we've mentioned that a number of times, that some of the some of the stuff that we see with him is that he can't shake those two losses. But I don't believe that any of the work he's doing is done to eliminate them from actually playing the game. It is to make sure that Ohio State is ready at the end of November and that that game actually is played. So that is not an outcome that Ohio State actually wants is if the nuclear option is selected. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I have a tough time, as you said, I, it seems weird or unlikely to me that that would be the case, but yeah. you're dealing with TV, you're dealing with Las Vegas. Well, Michigan TV. State did broach that topic already, yeah. that they were going to refuse to play. That is the level of concern that there is. Yeah, but that's also Michigan State and a team Fine. that was like, yeah. knew they were going to get beat 49 to nothing. I understand. And but the over-under was 48 in that game. Yeah, and Michigan weird. scored a touchdown with, a minute, with 30 seconds to go. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, but that's another, I mean, again, we're talking about another W in the, the win column against the spread. There are a lot of variables. What happens play if here. you turn an M upside down? It turns into a dub. Oh, wow. The, the, the thing here for Ohio State is um, the people in the building are pissed about it. Because sure. Because they should be. Uh, everyone should be pissed about it. If you've been playing against this team the last two and a half years, then, I mean, and it's not just they. People are like, oh, I can't believe he still bought tickets to the Ohio State Penn State game, even with all this going on. Like, clearly, those were bought yeah, earlier. You didn't buy them. You didn't last buy them last week. <laughs> like, the intention was to continue this going on. Now, that's, it, it, they were not going to stop until they got caught. The beauty of this is that almost certainly the, the leak, the, the rat, the mole is in Ann Arbor who's telling people that this is going on. So rather than pointing fingers at Ryan Day or the Ohio State program, like the Michigan media should probably find out who has recently been fired from their job in, in Ann Arbor or removed from up there that would have a reason to feel like, hey, maybe I should dime on these people. Huh. All right, top five candidates for that guy. Go. <laughs> huh. That's it's, not, it's not wise for me to talk about that right now. <laughs> Period. It would be very unwise. <laughs> it's interesting that like, Way more people outside of Ann Arbor have more idea of what's going on with this investigation than seem to be in Ann Arbor. It's almost like we're spying on them. <clears throat> I've been spying on them. I have a confession to make. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I've been spying on them for people, years. I saw pe- their entire message board. Well, Urban Meyer goes to Michigan games. <laughs> like, yeah. What? He sure does. Desmond Urban- ha- and Desmond Howard was on the sideline of the Ohio State game on Saturday with his son dressed in all Michigan gear. Have you like- seen Urban's bifocals? He can't read any uh, signals. Like, stunner shade. I was yeah. standing next to Urban Meyer. I, how many times have we interacted with Urban Meyer in our career? A lot. A lot. I was standing yeah. this close to him on the sideline on Saturday. Asked him. He, he, a, 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 a kickoff came down in the end zone and he had to field it. And then, and then he was fake to throw to the crowd. And I was like, yeah, you can't throw in a suit jacket anyway. And he had no idea who I was. <laughs> <laughs> and I I have dealt with, I have had many personal conversations with Urban Meyer. He couple, had a couple beverages. He uh, had no idea who I was. He's going to remember all the signs. This is not a guy who's <laughs> watching that view. He is a guy. All he's doing that entire game is doing this. Looking at the Ohio State bench. He's not watching Michigan signs for S sake. <laughs> Turn on the video that Adam King had. Adam King from uh, Channel 10 in Columbus. Find it on Twitter. Uh, maybe I'll post it inside of this video so people can see it. Uh, you are watching this guy. Better ask is, for permission. Who is a low. We don't break the rules a here. A low Sorry. level. A low level staffer standing this close to Mike Minter. Jesse Minter. And, uh, Jesse Minter, Mike, Mike McDonald, McDonald whatever. Minter. They're the same guy. They both were <laughs> yeah, benefiting the same way. <laughs> what year are we talking about? 
they were both benefiting the same way in 2021 and 2022 yeah. from, from this happening. And, and Mike McDonald got an NFL defensive coordinator. Yeah. Turned up Although pretty their good. defense is pretty good. Though. Sharon Moore doing the same thing like that. That's not normal. This is not a normal behavior. Sharon Moore's already on a show cause penalty from the NCAA because of the, the cheeseburger that apparently people are <laughs> like, they're, this is what they've decided is what they have to do in Ann Arbor to, to equalize things. And that's unfortunate. Can we, can we speculate wildly? Yeah. What do you guys think is going to happen? I, we'll I, probably talk more about this as more stuff happens. But. Yeah. But I, hey, good to call a shot. I would yeah. say it's a, a virtual certainty that Jim Harbaugh will get a show cause penalty and will not return to Michigan next year. And I think the NCAA will view that as justice served from their perspective. And I, as I mentioned before, like they're not the only one involved, but that's almost... That's pretty much as far as they can take it. They don't even control the postseason. The college football playoff selection committee could still say, you know what? We don't care. They're in. Like, yeah. They can put out a postseason ban, but like even that doesn't really matter anymore because then you'll appeal. They could take them. Like, so I'm going down a bunch of tangents and thinking about the other things that they could theoretically enforce that you normally see. The, the biggest issue that we have is that there has never been a case like this before. Nobody has been caught breaking this rule with evidence to prove that it happened. So there is no precedent for handing down uh Oh, but Jeff Levy was on the sideline and missed half a game. Yeah, he was there for a wedding and t- like, oh boy. So the point is that the show cause, they can loop this in with another definitive rule that has been broken with the previous investigation that is not closed, the previous case that is not closed and tag Jim Harbaugh with lack of institutional control, yeah. put a show cause on that. I don't, at that point, Michigan has to make a final decision on their own. I don't think it would come up to them. I think Jim Harbaugh, who is already trying to leave every single year in the off season, I think he would uh, thumb his nose at the NCAA and leave for good at that point and leave Michigan holding the bag and hope that that is enough for them to avoid any other penalties for the rest of their program. I can't, you said to speculate wildly, like, that's about that's as much speculation as I would do comfortably. Yeah. Anything beyond that gets wild. And I do think wild, wilder stuff, there is a non-zero chance of that. Yeah, it's on the table. But would I bet on it? No, I would not. Yeah. Uh, I think I think it's unlikely. Although betting on Michigan is really smart. It's lucrative. Um <laughs> Yeah, I think uh I think anything beyond that is unlikely to happen. Like I think Michigan is gonna still get to play its football games this year, and if they Win enough of them, they're going to go to the college football playoff and compete for a national championship. But uh, it's going to make the. Ohio I don't think State you can Michigan. do that. Oh my I don't God. think you can allow that to happen with Jim Harbaugh on the sideline. I just, I if I, you have, proof I think it's going to. If yeah. you have proof that this is happening, and then you're going to give him a show calls after the season, I think that's garbage. I don't. I, I think. Yeah, I, I think there is a. If we're again speculating wildly, I think there's a 15 percent chance he doesn't coach another game. Michigan. If if the evidence piles, they're up, off this week. If the evidence piles up. Over these next, which days. means that they investigate, like you would expect some sort of resolution before they're back on the you field. You have to. I think you have to. You can't say to them, "Okay, well, you guys are. This was super bad. You're you're all punished. Show cause for Minter. Show cause for for another show cause for Sharon Moore. Double show. Double show. Cause. Double, double well, show. I mean, you know, it's well, right now. It's a one year show cause. Yeah. You could add four years to it or whatever. Yeah. I, I don't think you can do that and then say, "Okay, go have a great rest of your season." Like you can't do that. It's a good point. I, I I don't I don't disagree with it. I guess I'm you just, can let the players play in Atlanta. Yeah, where that's the players, where the players play, play. Uh, but not in Ann Arbor. Can't let them play there. That's what? not where the players play. Remember when I made that joke before uh, snap judgments or bowl report, yeah. and he didn't he completely. I don't no get sold it. He didn't even. Yeah, Here's like, the thing, though. It's like he didn't even hear. I it. mean, you can say okay, and now he wants to use not, it for Ann you Arbor. Can say, you can say okay, Mike Hart can go up there and maybe he can be the acting coach the rest of the year or something like that. But we, it's very clear on video that Jesse Minter. And uh, Sharon Moore are very involved with this guy yeah. during the game. Like, it's maybe they were just doing lunch orders. It's possible. <laughs> yeah, ch- look at this really cool menu I have. It has all of Ohio State signals on it. That this is the yeah. chicken wrap. I, I, I'm sorry, you can't just let those guys finish the season as the coaching staff there. If, yeah. if, if, the, but if this I think is that's, proven, you I th- can't let them. I think that's the issue. Like, th- if you're getting getting to that point where you remove the whole coaching staff, like. The players cannot continue to play. It's unsafe now for Michigan. Because guess what? If they I'm no okay longer have their schematic advantage. I'm okay with it. 
<laughs> Just kidding. I know. I'm kidding. Uh, that was the reason that we wanted three different perspectives on the show, and that's what you all wanted. So hopefully you enjoyed that. I bet we could talk about it for a lot longer, but we're not going to because this is yeah. the podcast daily. Give us your wild speculation in the comments about what you think will happen, if anything. Because there is always the NCAA saying, and the Big Ten going, eh, who cares? But wow. Yeah. I don't. I don't think that they will, but we'll see. We're going to find out because who knows what tomorrow will bring. There'll probably be uh, more programs, more newscasters around the, the country scouring for footage of Connor Stallions on the sideline. Also, shout out to Adam King for grinding the tape. He said he watched two hours of footage. Three hours. Three hours. Took three hours to find that. Pretty he got a great part. shot of it. Yeah. And it's Connor. <laughs> Connor for real. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to be that. I'm sure there'll be more twists and turns. And when they arrive, we'll get into that on the podcast daily. But. We're going to shift gears now back to something that actually is happening on the field, which is Ohio State getting ready for Wisconsin on Saturday night in primetime at Camp Randall. We'll be back in here on a Woody Wednesday with some snap judgments after we talk to some of the players. And Ryan Day, again, he has moved up the lightning round to Wednesday night, so we'll have another update from the Ohio State coach uh, then and there. Stay tuned for that. He's Bill Landis. That's Jeremy Birmingham. I'm Austin Ward. We'll talk to you all later.